Hi everyone, my name is Nicola Attico and I work at the Vision and Innovation Office at ServiceNow as a DLT solution engineer. I will present a POC of how ServiceNow can manage ecological assets and liabilities through an ESG ledger based on Edera. I will also demonstrate a specific use case for renewable energy credits or RECs, which is a specific class of ESG assets. Standard ServiceNow Safe Harbor applies to this presentation. Companies have always been required to keep track of their financial assets and liabilities in the general ledger. This practice is the foundation of company accounting and financial reporting. Many of the challenges humankind is facing today with sustainability have a similar accounting need at a much bigger scale. Solving climate issues and other sustainability challenges require worldwide coordination. Data that needs to be managed in an ESG ledger is about ESG, assets and liability, for example carbon offsets or emissions, and corresponding MRV data that can be any verifiable data coming from sensors, devices like solar panels or human input. In the live demo, we will use the NOW platform together with the DERA DLT and Guardian API as the foundation for the worldwide ESG ledger. Using a DLT is vital for the creation of business networks among a virtually unbanded number of participants. This is the bottom line up front. First, ServiceNow is the orchestrator of the worldwide ESG ledger, allowing asset tokenization and linkage to MRV data. This helps organizations to move towards carbon neutrality and to communicate the results to their customers in a verifiable way. Second, participants can benefit from ESG tokenized assets in terms of visibility and verifiability, strongly reducing the risk of errors and greenwashing. Lastly, this approach applies equally well to other policies like the GHG protocol or VERA, allowing customers to leverage the NOW platform for the offsetting process end-to-end. -end. ESG assets have been a substantial trend in environmental economics over the last few years. Carbon markets are believed to be instrumental in reaching net zero by meeting ESG assets' demand and supply. Examples of assets include GAG emissions, offsets, carbon allowances and renewable energy certificates or RECs. These assets are also undergoing a process of tokenization. Why is that happening? Traditional ESG assets are not without flaws and their fast growth is putting these flaws into the spotlight. Although companies are significantly investing, greenwashing and double counting is a common problem, being verification of this claim very difficult. Also, these assets are often treated as fungible, missing much information about their provenance. Tokenized assets using distributed ledger technologies address many of these criticalities. Tokenized ESG assets allow a verifiable link with the underpinning data and ecosystem participants in such a way that misrepresentation and misuse of these instruments is very difficult. Tokenized assets are measurable, discoverable and more secure in a way that is visible to all parties. Let's describe a multi-party workflow for ESG assets. You typically have a branch of the process about emissions that are reconciled cross scopes along the supply chain and immutably disclosed on the ESG ledger as MRV data. Emissions are then tokenized in the form of brown tokens, which represent an ecological liability or debt. On the other branch, GAG reductions or avoidances are also immutably recorded as MRV data. Reduction or avoidances are then tokenized in the form of green tokens, representing an ecological asset or credit. Company owning brown tokens can then acquire green tokens representing either a CO2 ton or a megawatt hour that allows them to bar both tokens on the ledger with a transaction to verifiably represent the offset or retirement of the produced CO2. The process is constantly audited as a stream of data on the DLT. It can be audited using EI technique and also be subject to public scrutiny. In the live demo, we will focus on the green tokens minting for X. Many different participants characterize ESG business networks. These are some of the most frequent roles. An ecological project is the supply side, which wants to demonstrate some reduction or avoidance of CO2. The buyer is the demand side, any company that is willing to offset its emissions. The registry is an institution overseeing the ecosystem and allowing the creation of tokens. Examples of registries are VERA 
and golden standard. A validation and verification body is an organization authorized to audit the claims from the ecological project, analyzing MRV data, like satellite images, or by doing on-site inspections. An exchange is an entity that allows matching demand and supply, typically through a price discovery mechanism. A financial intermediary can be involved in the process to present these assets and may also allow off-the-counter transactions. For further investigation into the roles, I recommend reading the document Voluntary Ecological Markets by the Interwork Alliance. Let's see now the context for the live demo, a specific form of ESG assets called Renewable Energy Credits or RECs. What is a REC? A REC is a tradable, non-tangible asset representing 1 megawatt of green energy. Whereas a carbon offset represents a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, a REC represents a quantity of energy produced from renewable sources like solar panels, wind or hydro. RECs allow companies to decrease CO2 emissions from energy usage and can be treated as carbon offsets in some cases, although the two concepts are separated. RECs are standardized. We will refer here to the International REC Standard, or IREC, which is one of the most adopted. RECs are experiencing tremendous growth and they are forecasted to grow even further from today to 2030. They are experiencing issues, so, related to trust, visibility and their effectiveness. One frequent criticism is about RECs being commodities, with little traceability information about actual projects and in which geographies they have been generated. Also, there is no way for buyers to verify the history of the REC. The entire system is based on central control by authorities, which is of course difficult to scale. This leave parties exposed to the risk of errors, double counting or greenwashing by parties that will try to circumvent or trick the system. We are going to see how to address these issues in the live demo. This slide represents the data model we are using for the live demo. The registry will be the IREC registry. On the left side of the data model, we see policies which are made by blocks and defined in the Guardian configuration UI. Some of these blocks will be minting blocks tied to an unfungible token under which individual NFT instances will be created representing the RECs. On the right side of the data model, the user will be a company called Solar Inc producing green energy from solar panel installations. They will create an ecological project which must comply with the RX standard. Under this process, they will create multiple devices representing the solar panels. Each device will generate issuance requests either automatically or manually. In the demo, we will see the manual way. In the flow, we will see multiple on-ledger approvals which are made by the registry but could equally be made by a third party. This is the high-level architecture for this use case. The process is the flow represented here and involves the minimal number of participants, the registry and Solar Inc. The steps we will see in the demo are user project and device creations, sending of MRV data, token association and user KYC, and finally REC minting. In another demo, we will go through the transfer and retirement of this token, which requires to cover first the carbon accounting flow. The Now platform manages all the ESG-related workflows speaking with the Guardian API. The Guardian API is a policy workflow engine for ESG driven by configurable policies which use best-in-class identity management and DLT libraries. IREC is one of these policies that define all the on-ledger steps that needs to happen to have a valid REC. The entire history of the REC is visible as the token chain of trust. Edera is the layer one we use as part of the ESG Worldwide Ledger. Edera is the ideal DLT for ESG use cases. There are many reasons for that. Performance, governance, economics. One that is especially close to our art is being carbon neutral. It has been evaluated as the greenest proof of stake ledger by the Center for Blockchain Technology of the University College of London. In this diagram, you see the number of watt hours per transaction for different proof of stakes, DLT, and other non post networks like Bitcoin or non DLT networks like Visa. Edera scores as the most green with 004 watt hours per transaction lower than all the other networks. So, with that context, let's move to the demo environment. Okay, this is the demo environment. I will keep two browser windows open. The first one is related to the registry administrator, and the second one, 
is related to Solar Inc., the company requesting the IREC. So as the registry administrator, I can see that there is already one registry defined in this instance, which is called IREC registry and managed by the user registry admin. This registry has a defined account ID, a topic ID and a DID, and has no parent, is a root authority. On the other side, the user called Solar Inc. Um, is tied to an account ID on Edera, as well as topic ID and a DID, but also has a parent DID, representing the fact that they are hierarchically uh, dependent, and it depends on the root authority, which we just defined. So as the root authority to set up the system, the first step is to import the policy. In this case, we are going to import the policy that is called IREC v2, and we submit. The policy has been imported, is currently in draft mode with some information, missing the version number because we need to publish it, but as the metadata assigned to it that allows to uh, track all the elements of the policy. We can open the policy on the Guardian uh, configuration UI, where we can see that the IREC policy, as every policy managed by the Guardian, is actually a policy workflow engine where all the steps define the process which is managed on the distributed ledger. This is where we can uh, modify the policy if you want to do any change or build one completely new. At the same time, within ServiceNow, we can uh, uh, parse the policy, which creates the same structure in read-only mode as policy blocks. And we can see the detail of all the steps of the policy just within ServiceNow. To make this policy available to the user, uh, the registry needs to publish this policy. When the policy is published, it acquires a, a version number, 1.0 in this case, and is ready for users to subscribe. So now, as Solar Inc., a customer of the registry, I want to register my first solar panel project inside this registry. So I can go to request something, and under the Guardian category, I have the opportunity to register a project. I can select the policy, which is of interest for my project, and I can fill the other information with data. This information is minimal compared to the data actually required, but we want to keep it simple for this demo. Now we can submit. So you see here the project has been created with the data associated to that and the metadata regarding the DLT verifiable information. If we move then to the registry admin, we can see that under the policy now, the um, registrant project has been uh, created. So I can open this project verify the information which is related and approve it. As you can see, the approval step, of course, move the status to approved on the DLT. So now, as the registry customer, I can come back to my um, Guardian category and I can create an ecological device associated to the project. So I can select the date of installation, for example, today, and I can attach this device to a specific policy and project. Then I'm going to fill all the other information. With this information field, I can submit. As you can see, the device has been created with some data associated to it. Again, it's in waiting for approval. And here you have the metadata for the device. When I came back to my um, registry admin, I can see that if I refresh my related list, now my device is there and is waiting for approval. I can review the information and associated metadata and I can approve the device. Now that my device is in status approved, there is another element that is important to highlight. Uh, as part of the policy import, there is a token that has been uh, created. If I click on my tokens, I can see the token name and the token ID. Now as the client project of the registry, I need to associate this token to my account and I also need to complete the KYC process. So I have a request to associate and do the KYC steps. The request in itself is very simple. It's just required to fill the token ID and we can submit the request.
We see here that the association of the user to the token has been automatically done, but there is a QAC step that needs to be uh, done by the registry administrator. So if I go to the registry admin again, I can have a look to all the token which I'm managing as re registry admin. And I see that Solar Inc is associated with this token, but is not KYC yet, and they just sent a request. So I can open this record, review all the required information for the KYC, and grant KYC to this project. Now that the user has been KYC'd to this token, uh, is in good shape to request the issuance of token for the uh, green energy they are producing. So becoming again uh, the um, Solar Inc project, I can refresh this form and see that I just received the, the KYC. Here it is, and I can request the issuance for my first period of energy production. I have a form called the request issuance where I can select my policy, uh, the project, and then the device, and then select the reference period for my green energy production and how many kilowatt hour I have generated. And as the project owner, I can hit submit. So my issuance request um, has been created, uh, and this is related to two kilowatt hour, so two racks but it's still in waiting for approval. For the Guardian to mint the NFTs related to this two kilowatt hour, this issuance request must be approved by the registry admin. So I switch to the registry admin window and under policies and device, I see my issuance request, which is waiting for approval. When I approve it, I can then go under tokens, select the policy token, and open the token on Ashscan, which is an Adara DLT explorer, and see that two tokens has been generated. Any user can then verify uh, through the policy the chain of trust for any minting activity. So here you can see that these two NFTs specific to the IREC token has been generated through a process that starts with the creation of the uh, registry and all the other activities that we have seen so far. Each one of them is timestamped and signed by all parties. You can see the data here and the proof that allow verification of this data and the chain of trust for these two NFTs which represent the IREC involve only two parties, which, is, which are the registry and the Solar Inc company, but they can involve as many parties as required by the ecosystem. This completed the demonstration.